Greetings, I'm Dr. Stephen Cohen and I'm narrating a vitrectomy for a patient with a macular hole. This surgery is being done with one of the small incision systems. It's a 23 gauge system and the instruments are slightly smaller than the ones we use for a standard vitrectomy. Here you're seeing one of the ports being inserted into the eye. That port's used for infusion. And here you see an infusion cannula placed through the port and this will maintain the pressure at a safe level throughout the surgery. Instruments can safely be introduced into the eye just a few millimeters behind the colored part of the eye. This case is being done under anesthesia. The patient's awake, but the eye's been anesthetized prior to the surgery. There you see another port being placed, and finally the third port will be placed on the other side of the eye. This allows complete access to the inside of the eye for the surgery uh, and for the various maneuvers that are necessary to affect closure of the macular hole. The small white sponge in the center of the cornea is used to protect the cornea from the microscope light. It has to be removed though to allow adequate visualization of the interocular contents. At this point you're viewing the inside of the eye through a special lens system. On the right side of the picture is the vitrectomy probe and on the left side is a light pipe. Initially the vitreous is removed from the front part of the eye. Here some of the vitreous has been removed and the vitrectomy probe on the right is being used to suck the vitreous off of the back surface of the eye. There's a layer of vitreous which is tightly adherent to the posterior surface of the eye and that's the layer that's responsible for causing the macular hole to open. It takes some time for the vitreous to be pulled free of first of the optic nerve which is the white circle in the middle of the picture and then you'll see the macular hole which is slightly to the left of the optic nerve. The uh, surgical video is sped up to two times normal and extensively edited. What you're seeing here in a little less than seven minutes is about an hour long surgical procedure. Here you see the vitreous being pulled more forward. Removing the posterior hyaloid membrane from the back of the eye is the key maneuver of macular hole surgery. It's very difficult to see the membrane. Here you see me pulling at it with the vitrectomy probe and elevating it away from the eye. You can see a little bit of the membrane in the light and also as it pulls free of the retina. I'll uh, put some labels in the video trying to show you some edges of the membrane um, to help uh, with the visualization of the uh, layer. The view through the microscope is better than the view that we can capture on the video camera even though we do have a high quality uh, video chip available in the operating room. At this point the posterior hyaloid membrane is almost completely free of the posterior pole. Here you see in the light um, projection, the shiny surface of the hyaloid, and you can see the stringy uh, back surface of the vitreous as it's pulled free of the retina in the back of the globe and then subsequently removed. Finally, we put a special contact lens on the eye to allow for high resolution visualization of the macula, and the next, next maneuver is removing the internal lim limiting membrane from the macula, from the macula. The internal lim limiting membrane is a layer of the retina. These are specially designed 23 gauge forceps that are able to grasp the extremely fine membrane and pull, pull it free of the retina. The membrane is attached to the vessels at some point and as it's removed it's not uncommon to have a few superficial hemorrhages. You can see a few of those at the top of the picture. Here you see the membrane being pulled around the macula. It's best to try to free it up 360 degrees around the macular hole to allow the macular hole to close properly. Here you see the much of the membrane being removed temporally. We used to stain the membranes with indocyanin and green dye, but currently uh, with these new instruments it's not necessary. In the 
The next step of the procedure involves filling the eye with an air bubble. You just saw the air bubble moving in from the top left of the picture. And the shiny reflection you're seeing in the picture is the interface of the air bubble and the interoc interocular fluids. The instrument you see on the right is a soft tip cannula, which is used to remove fluid from the eye. The infusion is used to fill the eye with air. Here the last little bit of fluid is being removed from the eye. Since the air only lasts about a week in the eye and that's not long enough to close the macular hole, we subsequently flush through a gas bubble um, which lasts longer and allows for the hole to close. There you see one of the trocars being removed and now on the top left a special gas is being flushed through the eye. Once the eye is filled with the gas, then the trocars being, will be removed from the bottom left, as you see here. A Q-tip is used to rub the incision shut. And then once the eye reaches the proper pressure, the final trocar has been removed. Thank you for attention. I hope this has been helpful.